So, um, konnichiwa, good afternoon and namaste everyone. My name is Sakshi Roy and this program is hosted by the University of Tokyo India office and brought to you by MEX, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology in Japan. I would like to welcome all of our expert panelists we have from world-class Japanese universities and our amazing attendees. Thank you for taking our time to participate in this webinar. So um, before we start, let me give you a brief uh, introduction about our office. Our office is a part of Study in Japan Global Network Project in Southwest Asia by MEX, and we provide comprehensive information on Japanese universities. We organize education fairs and seminars throughout India to spread awareness about higher education opportunities in Japan. So about our webinar uh, today, uh, we are conducting session 34 of study and work in Japan webinar series. And by means of all these sessions, our mission is to introduce Japanese universities to you and to assist you to study and work in Japan. So there will be three different Japanese universities representing in each session, national, public and private universities. And all the universities are basically focusing to introduce English based programs that are offered by them. So um, there has been approximately 700 plus universities as well as uh, specialized vocational institutions in Japan. And I must tell you that studying abroad in Japan means you'll further your studies in a well-rounded education system and you'll experience a unique new culture and you'll have a chance to gain more international perspective. So no doubt uh, you'll learn from the very best in the world and uh, work with um, some of the most modern labs with great facilities and you can also um, learn Japanese easily if you live in Japan and some of the universities have preparatory Japanese language courses for international students who are enrolled in their programs. So all right, uh, now uh, I request all our attendees to please uh, scan this QR code to register for our upcoming webinars. So it's really a great opportunity for all of you to participate in our webinars. Uh, you can uh, directly ask your queries to representatives of each university. However, I know a 20 minutes presentation is very short time to understand about the university, but I would like to recommend you to please um, note down the contact addresses of each university so that in case uh, you have further doubts, please feel free to ask them directly later on by writing them. And uh, this is the email address of our office. In case if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. We would be very happy to assist you. So thank you very much for listening to me. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's session. And please don't forget to register for our upcoming webinars. And I hope uh, it will help you to consider studies in Japan, seizing the opportunity and build an even brighter and more fulfilling future. Thank you very much. Please enjoy today's session. Thank you, Ms. Sakshi, for the uh, wonderful presentation. Before coming to Japan, I was not aware of all these details. I believe that all students who are attending now are like are very lucky to have this guidance. So let's uh, proceed with the webinar and let me share the agenda screen. So uh, now we have the uh, now we have a presentation by Ms. Kushi, who is a student of the Kyo University, uh, and she would give a brief overview of study and work life in Japan, along with her student experience here. Over to you, Ms. Kushi. Thank you, Mr. Vaishnavi, for the introduction. I will share my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you so much. So a very good afternoon to all the panelists and attendees. I'm Kushi Javeri from Keo University. And today I'll be talking about the study and work life in Japan. So first I'll start by giving a brief introduction about myself. I was raised in Tokyo and I'm currently pursuing my bachelor's degree in environmental engineering and computer science at Keo University. I am a member of the India Japan Laboratory, the GIS Laboratory, and the SDPE Laboratory. I'm also a recipient of the Keo University Scholarship. I have interned at Shibaura Institute of Technology, Hitachi, Tsukuba University. And last year, I was also a member of the Social Innovation Hackathon that was held in collaboration with well-known universities in India, like IIT and NIT. So why should you choose Japan as your destination to pursue further studies? 
Firstly, Japan is the third largest economy in the world with a population of 126 million and 47 prefectures. It is a member of the G7 summit with other developed countries, including US, UK, Canada, and Germany. Japan ranks ninth in the Global Peace Index and has topped the Safe Cities Index for the third time. There are a range of international cuisines such as Indian, Italian, Nepalese, and Japanese available to students coming from the overseas. Recently, culturally appropriate food, including halal, vegetarian, and vegan options are also available. Health policies have, pro have proved to be very beneficial to international students as 70% of the costs are paid by the government. Some of the other advantages include job prospects, affordable tuition fee, and scholarships, which will be explained later in the presentation. So Japanese universities are categorized into national that are founded by the Japanese government, public that are laid by local public entities, and private that are based on founders. Japanese universities provide student services and facilities to strengthen the personal and professional growth of students. Some of these services include libraries, research labs, student lounge, gymnasiums, and dormitories, as you can see on the right. The several universities in Japan that offer English programs at undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral levels. In Japan, undergraduate programs are for four years, graduate for one or two, depending on the program you're applying for, and doctoral for three to four years. The English programs in Japan are world-renowned as they provide a range of degrees at an affordable price in comparison to other countries like Canada and the US. So the fee structure is undoubtedly an important aspect for applying to universities. I certainly believe that Japan is one of the most affordable countries for students to pursue their further studies as the tuition fee for international students and domestic students is the same, which is very rare. As you can infer from the chart, the tuition fee of public universities in the US is five times higher than the ones in Japan, while the private universities in the US is three times more. The living expenses are similar, but Japan is cheaper than the US in terms of overall education. Financial assistance is also provided by universities or the Japanese government in the form of internal and external scholarships. The MIX scholarship and the JASO scholarship are some of the well-known scholarships as most of the international students have acquired them to reduce financial burden. Um, I have listed a couple of basic documents that most of the universities ask when you apply to their English undergraduate programs. For more details, I recommend you to check the application guidelines of the program you wish to enroll in. In order to apply for the master's or the PhD courses, it is crucial for the applicant to contact the supervisor of the program for admission assistance. So now I'll be talking about the job prospects. I would uh, like to tell all the students that the job opportunities in Japan are countless as several benefits come along once you work for a company here. Graduates from Japanese universities tend to work for multinational companies such as Amazon, Google, and Toyota. Graduates, especially with a computer background or an engineering background, have a great scope in Japan. The average salary after graduation is minimum 2.5 million yen per year, which is 17 lakh rupees. Japan also has the lowest unemployment rate, which is 2.34%. Visa procurement is not a very tedious process, and the student visa can be upgraded to working visa if the student is able to find a job within Japan. As you can see in this chart, um, the number of dispositions for employment purposes from international students has been escalating over the years. 2019 witnessed double the capacity of international students than 2017. There has been a 50% increase in the number of students and professors coming from the overseas. The number, of, the number of international students from Asia has been increasing because of the wide job prospects in Japan. Hence, many international students come to Japan with the aim to pursue their further studies. Another very interesting and distinct feature is the opportunity to experience various seasons. Compared to other countries, Japan does not experience harsh climates. One can enjoy different seasons in the country, like the cherry blossoms in spring, snow in winters, and the foliage in autumn. 
The diverse weather conditions give students a chance to experience different seasons and travel across the country. Lastly, I'll talk a little about my student life in Japan. I can certainly say that my university has opened doors to several opportunities and experiences. I have been able to engage in various activities and have also interacted with students of diverse backgrounds. The picture on the right is from an event called the Sofi Sen, which is a term used for the baseball rivalry between two prestigious universities, Keio University and Vassar University. The picture on the upper right is from the hackathon that was held last year in collaboration with IIT and NIT. In the, in the India-Japan laboratory, we conduct social and cultural events so that students from both countries are given the chance to communicate and collaborate. In the GIS laboratory, we aim to approach different challenges of the environment using computer-based tools. So to sum up, I highly recommend students to consider studying in Japan as it will certainly be a fruitful experience without having to spend a lot on education. And this brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope I have been able to give students and parents an insight into the study and work life in Japan. I look forward to meeting some of you very soon in Japan. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much, Ms. Kushi, for uh, giving us the wonderful presentation and also an overall picture of what students' life looks like in Japan. So let's move on with the university presentations. Here is the agenda slide. So first we have Saitama University. As the only national university established in the Saitama prefecture, its history began about a century ago. The founding principles reflect diversity, harmony, and progress seen on the campus today. Promotion of international joint research and industry-university collaboration are two of the uh, salient features of the university. So more information about the admission process will be given by Professor Chandrasekhar. Over to you, Professor. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, let me share my screen first. Okay. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, first of all, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, my name, as uh, she already introduced, my name is Chandra Sekhar Goit, and I am uh, with Saitama University. Uh, I'll, I'll be talking about my laboratory as well um, in, during the presentation today. So the title of today's presentation, what I'm going to talk about is about opportunities for higher education and research. And uh, of course, like the students who have joined today for this webinar must be in a varied background, but uh, today my talk will be specifically for the international graduate program. So it's about the graduate study. So if you want to pursue the master's program or the PhD program, for example, in the field of civil and environmental engineering, that's my talk today. So uh, without any further delay, let me uh, go for what? So what I'm going to talk today is about Saitama University, very general information, as well as the what are the other graduate school uh, of, uh, and the co offered courses. Then the next thing I'm going to talk in detail is about the International Graduate Program, which is the main talk today. Uh, and particularly, I think uh, most of you want to know that what are the opportunities for the education as well as research. And also the important aspect uh, is the available scholarship. Is there a scholarship available? I'll be talking about uh, those uh, content, as well as what are the type of the research uh, we are doing at the Saitama University. And also the research group, what else uh, besides the research, what is going on for the students, for example, like the student activities. So uh, this is the my uh, more or less the general content I'm going to talk. First of all, where is Saitama University? I think most of you know Japan and Tokyo. So Tokyo is here. Uh, I think the picture might be a bit smaller. So let me enlarge it here. So this is Tokyo and this is Tokyo. This is Saitama Prefecture. So within Saitama Prefecture, this is Omiya. This is the uh, capital of Saitama Prefecture. Tokyo Station is right here. And Saitama University, as you can see, is here. It's somewhere in between. In, I wouldn't say it's more, of course, we are close to Omiya, but it's very close to Tokyo as well. So this gives them ideal location, actually. The university is situated ideally, such that 
if you want to access, for example, the public uh, services, for example, anything else, like if you want to go to embassies, which are in the Tokyo. So Tokyo is also nearby, as well as there are so many uh, facilities available in Omiya that you can go. And to the, give the perspective, Narita Airport, I, I think many of you know about Narita Airport, and uh, Narita Airport is right here. So this makes the university quite an ideal place uh, to live as well as to study. So uh, I, would, I would like to maybe skip this one. This is the, about the uh, brief history about the site of the university. And I think later I'll have a chance to show the video, I hope the, the time allows. But this is the present day view on the right bottom right corner. This is the university campus. So the details about the university, I'll send the link uh, later on about the university page. So you can actually check the uh, university page, which is available in English, and all the information about, uh, for example, here you can see here, like what are the exchange programs, as well as what are the academic programs, what, how the student life looks like, and all the, all the information uh, you can get very easily from this website. So uh, Saitama University, as uh, earlier introduced, is a national university established in 1949. Uh, and it has more than 8,300 students enrolled as of uh, this year, May 2021. The, the composition is like this, undergraduate, master's and doctoral uh, students. And we have more than 460 faculty, uh, university faculty members. And we have in total five faculties. So the five faculties are as uh, shown in this slide, faculty of liberal arts, faculty of education, Faculty of Economics, Faculty of Science, and Faculty of Engineering. Today is my focus is on the fifth one, that is Faculty of Engineering. But if you are interested, what are the courses that is available in the Faculty of Science? So we can see from the name of the department here, it's easier. So as Faculty of Science, do we have uh, subjects such as mathematics, physics, chemistry, biochemistry, and molecular biology, regulatory biology. And here in the Faculty of Engineering, you have mechanical engineering, electrical, electronics and applied physics, information and computer sciences, we have applied chemistry, and finally, civil and environmental engineering, where I belong, and uh, which is the main topic of today. So if you are in, uh, interested, for example, in different uh, graduate schools, for example, not only the uh, graduate school of science and engineering, there are three graduate schools in the uh, university. One is the graduate school of humanities and social sciences, one is the Graduate School of Education, and finally, the Graduate School of Science and Engineering. You can check the links. I will be sending the link uh, after my presentation today. The, for example, all the graduate school uh, information can be obtained here. So this is the Graduate School of Humanities and Social Sciences. And under this, you can find like Department of Social. There are different information, master's program, for example, master's and doctoral program, uh, economics and management studies, Japanese and Asian studies, social and cultural studies, and so on. And also, we have the Graduate School of Education. Uh, this is the Graduate School of Education page. The link is here. Unfortunately, this page is available only in Japanese. And finally, this is the Graduate School of Science and Engineering. The English Medium Program, I think most of you uh, might have a question. I think I before, uh, I'll tell even later on, but the our program, for example, the international program, actually is English-based program. You don't need to have a Japanese ability. There are students here in the university who are enrolled who graduate without uh, speaking Japanese at all. And we have also like within the English medium program, Grad School of Science and Engineering, there are two different type. Link I'll be providing later. One is the International Graduate Program on Civil and Environmental Engineering, and one is the International Graduate Program on Environmental Science. These two are available. So uh, in the Graduate School of Science and Engineering, a wide discipline, there are a wide variety of uh, discipline that is covered actually from life science to mathematics, electronics, physics, mechanical engineering, chemistry, as well as environmental science and civil engineering. So actually within the, uh, the field of uh, Graduate School of Engineering, for example, science and engineering, you can find a lot of information. Uh, these all information are available on the website. So please feel free to go through it. For example, if somebody is interested in study about molecular biology, uh, somebody is interested, for example, in study about the uh, robotics or the mechanical engineering, for example, feel free to go through the pages which are available in English. 
Besides, so we I, I talk about the grad school that, that we have three uh, grad schools, for example, these three graduate schools as well as the five faculties. But to support these, we have a various uh, educational and different research institutes, such as the Institute of Innovative Technology. Uh, then also we have like Analysis Center for Science, Biology Research Center, and so on. And there are different uh, centers actually that are there to support the life of uh, students, for example. For example, here we have international uh, office, for example. We have the Japanese Language Education Center if somebody wants to study Japanese. So there are varieties of institutes that actually offer specialized uh, subjects as well that you can actually go through it. The link will be provided. Now, let's look at the overseas partner universities. So, Saitama universities, actually, we have a lot, quite many uh, overseas partner universities. For example, in Europe, we have 58, the highest is in Europe. Then in, uh, sorry, in Asia, we have 85 first, Asia is 85. And also, I believe like even in India, we have quite many, more than 10 uh, universities are our partner universities. And North America, for example, as well as Latin American and Caribbean. Africa and Oceania, for example. So this gives a more or less idea about that we are well connected, not only in terms of the uh, research, but also the student exchange program. Uh, we are, uh, due to the COVID, unfortunately, this uh, one or two year has been uh, quite difficult because of the uh, restriction to come. But actually, uh, we have a, uh, on the front page of the Saitama University, if you read, there is a summer program and there are a different type of programs available, for example. So this part of people, the students from the partner university, they come to Saitama University as well. Now, about the uh, International Graduate Program on Civil and Environmental Engineering, what I'm going to say is like, beside this, which I'm going to talk, the below is the International Graduate Program. This is environmental science. So one is the engineering part and one is the environmental science. In, under the environmental science, there are uh, different uh, departments like environmental science, mechanical engineering, mathematics, bioscience, and functional material science. So in the department of civil engineering, actually, the civil engineering department is comprised of five different research groups. And each research group has uh, many faculty members and different subgroups, actually. But let me give an overview of the research group at the uh, civil and environmental engineering department. First is the geotechnical and geospatial research. I think by the name, geotechnical is just about, about more about the geotechnical aspect. Second one, as you may know that we have a quite many earthquakes in Japan, uh, just not so long ago, we had one big earthquake. Uh, so we have one dedicated group, actually the earthquake disaster prevention and mitigation group. We have structural engineering, mechanics and material groups. We have a hydraulic and environmental engineering group. And finally, we have transportation and planning group. So actually these five groups co covers quite a many area, uh, which actually, for example, let's say somebody wants to study tunnel engineering, for example, which is, which, can, which is a part of the geotechnical engineering, for example, or somebody wants to be a foundation design uh, engineer, for example, do they want to design foundations, which is, which is included here in the earthquake disaster prevention and discussion group. I will briefly talk about the research. What are the research that is that are being carried out here at the university a bit later, but let me look at the quickly look at the field of study. Uh, those five research groups they carry a wide range of research from ecological, earthquake, transportation planning, environmental engineering, infrastructure management, also like coastal, structural, geotechnical, concrete, and hydraulic. So it, it has a wide variety of research area. Now, this is what I wanted to talk uh, mainly, actually. This is the International Graduate Program on Civil and Environmental Engineering. First thing, the program is quite old in one way. It, was, uh, it started in 1992. So basically, it's almost like 30 years uh, old now, this program. The medium of program is English. As I said uh, earlier, that there is no requirement of Japanese language. Even if you don't speak, if you, if you don't learn uh, Japanese, it's perfectly fine. You can study in English. You're both, and the students enroll for postgraduate studies. That means either a master's program or doctoral program. This because this is a graduate program, this doesn't cover the undergraduate study. So if you are interested, for example, in this program, uh, there are various scholarships as well that are available. That like, for example, Ministry of Education makes scholarship is available. We have Asian Development Bank scholarship, World Bank. Also we have a Zaika scholarship and others as well. 
And beside that, if you see the number of the students, for example, total enrollment, it has been since 1992 till this year, April, we have more than 685 students from over 30 countries. And you can see this is the uh, graduates, our graduates since 1992 to 2001. And you see there are quite many uh, countries uh, from, for example, from Africa, we have uh, students as well as from New Zealand, we have, we have I think the majority uh, so far in this, uh, in this chart, if you see Sri Lanka is there, for example, Bangladesh, Nepal, Vietnam, Thailand. Also, we have students uh, from India. Uh, even now, I think there are one or two students who are enrolled in a doctoral program at our university. Also, let me briefly tell that it's about this, uh, for the doctoral program, uh, firstly, the master's program uh, application has already been finished for 2022, but doctoral program is still ongoing. I think the deadline is in November. So please check the program's website if you are interested to apply, for example, for the scholarship. So uh, this is the range of our uh, graduates who are scattered now actually after getting a degree from here, they are actually all over the world. So uh, briefly, let me uh, talk about the research as well, if, because of, this is a graduate program and in Japan, like uh, uh, the, in each university, if you go actually the important, importance of research is there. And we, our university also has like the main focus is also the research. Master students will do the research as well and PhD students, of course, they have to do the research. So I want to give a brief overview uh, about the, let's say that the research in structural engineering, the, because earthquake is quite uh, frequent in Japan. So the uh, talk about the uh, high damping rubber bearings, for example, how they behave, for example, and also, for example, the bridges, for example, road letting curves of the old bridges uh, are part of the one of the research. Also, uh, we have a research, for example, which we do as a vibration-based structural health monitoring. So because, you know, like uh, we build the bridges, let's say 50 years ago, or how the bridges will still function or not function, how can we upkeep the uh, bridge performance? So this is one of the method that is being utilized. Uh, we, there is a research area which we utilize, for example, in the AI and UAV and IoT together, for example, for the earthquake resilience and maintenance, for example. Also about the earthquake aspect I already talked about, uh, design of the seismic, uh, design of the isolation dampers, for example, is being carried out in the structural engineering laboratory. Then we look at the concrete engineering aspect, for example, this is a recent, and I think this is also, for example, if you think about India, the, to the topic is quite interesting here in this uh, research, is that uh, construction for hot weather concreting based on aging climate and material. This is ongoing, actually, a uh, project uh, at the moment. Uh, it, it comprises of uh, different countries. And this, the research is about like how the, the structure that is built, for example, behave in extreme temperature if the temperature rises for example 45 48 or 50 degrees for example okay and then uh also let, let me show that this is uh, on the left side this is a utilizing of the seismic behavior of the uh, reinforced column beam uh joint uh, that is being carried out and on the right hand side this is quite interesting is that the utilizing the light bacteria to heal the crack in the concrete this is quite interesting research that is being carried out within the uh, concrete engineering laboratory. And also in the geotechnical laboratory, there are a wide range of work that is being carried out. For example, uh, utilizing the uh, slope, uh, slope stability, for example, early warning system, how to utilize this system, how to create that system, that is one part of the work. And the other part, for example, about like interaction between uh, ground and structure when you are you, you, when you are constructing, uh, let's say, a, a foundation or a, or a pile, for example, in this, as shown in this picture. And this is a quite uh, interesting ongoing research. This is about like uh, how the, because, you know, like uh, in particularly in developing countries, uh, we usually dump the uh, garbage, for example, in the landfill site. If you dump the in the landfill site, well, how this, uh, affect the groundwater, which eventually we drink, for example. 
So this research is quite ongoing and quite important in, from the perspective and uh, a lot of uh, you know, uh, students are working in this research area at the moment. Also, we have hydraulic engineering for the flood risk uh, evaluation, how to uh, consider that what type of flood, flood it might uh, appear, for example, or what is the uh, management, how, how can we manage, for example, here the experimental study on the use of the vegetation to control the flood. That is being also carried out. And uh, earlier I talked about tunnel. So we have a, a rock mechanics laboratory as well, who do, deals with the tunnel aspect as well. And uh, this is about the earthquake engineering to develop a system which is more resilient to the uh, earthquake motion, utilizing, for example, the mechanical interface. And also we have the transportation planning uh, laboratory, which I discussed earlier. So it's a job, uh, the, the laboratory actually have an interesting approach that it invites the public in, 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 in the discussion with the research. And finally, uh, I will talk about the FSO parties, for example, beside the, uh, beside the, you know, the, okay, let me go back again, sorry, I think. Okay, beside the uh, study and the research, we usually have uh, the foreign student office party that all the students and the faculty member come together and we have a party, for example. Also, there are the different laboratory, as I talked about, the research group has different laboratories. The different laboratories has a, a lab parties. Students, the, these are all international students as well as the Japanese students combined together to play sports. And also students cook, for example, their own country's food. We call it the Mutsume Festival. It's like as shown in this uh, slide. Uh, this is a quick look at the entrance uh, of the Saitama University uh, the library. And as uh, Ms. Kusi already, already talked earlier about the season, actually. So in Saitama University, we can see actually all four seasons. So this is the picture, for example, this is the spring, the cherry blossom that uh, uh, Ms. Kusi earlier uh, talked about. And then we have the summer. We have the autumn and we are in winter. And uh, as you can see that in winter, uh, not every year, but uh, most of the time we have snow. So I would like to play our video, very quick one. Okay, and then finally, for the contact part, uh, we have a dedicated uh, page, which uh, the link I'll be uh, sending is right here as well. So using the contact, you can contact our uh, program to find if you have any information, if you need any information, for example, for uh, admission related or any other program related itself. So, uh, and also we have a Facebook page, uh, so you can actually can get the more up-to-date information from our Facebook page as well. If you can, if you want to connect, feel free to connect the, our page. I think that's all for me for today. So thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Professor, for such a comprehensive presentation and also especially for covering this facts and statistics part of uh, how many international students and the number of scholarships available. Thank you very much. Uh, we can proceed with the Q&A session now. Uh, is it okay if I pick some uh, questions? Please, please, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, are, the, are the undergraduate programs in Saitama University, are they in English or in Japanese? Unfortunately, undergraduate program is only in Japanese. Um, okay. And also uh, in the mechanical engineering department, does it include aerospace engineering too? 
aerospace engineering uh i don't think so but i would suggest to check with the website itself i think it will be better to confirm it uh, yes thank you and also for the uh, international graduate program in civil and environmental engineering is there any minimum gpa requirement there is a requirement. The requirement is uh, already listed on the website of the admission. It depends on whether you are applying for the master's program or the doctorate program. So please uh, feel free to see the website. Okay, thank you, Professor. And what about uh, business administration courses like MBA courses? Are they being offered? We have the uh, economics department as well in the university, but uh, I cannot tell you the details about that one. So it's better, I think, to check on the website of the uh, the graduate program, for example, with the business, uh, let's say, economics department. Okay, okay, thank you. And also in India, there are some undergraduate programs which are for three years of duration. Mm. So what about those students? Can they apply for higher studies like master's program? Uh, the it depends for example in the sense like uh, we have a requirement that how many years of schooling is necessary i think it, this is uh, in the re, the requirement is provided on the website so i'll suggest that the students should first of all check the website and still if he or she thinks that that it's not covered feel free to ask email yes. we will be glad to answer back and also like i just sent all the links which i talked about so everybody can see the links Yes, yes. Thank you, Professor. We can take one more question. So, yeah, yeah, please. Um, uh, what about like, uh, what are the uh, extracurricular activities students can engage in? Like, are there any prominent clubs or associations in oh, Satama yeah. University? That's a very good question. And I think we have many. We have like a basketball club. We have the, uh, let's say, tennis club, for example. And international student, it's interesting. You'll find that they have a cricket club. They play cricket in the uh, ground of the Satama University. Oh, so that's, wow, not, that's great. Yeah, that, that's not, that shouldn't be an issue, I think. You, you can, and the good news is that not only the international student, but also Japanese student join. So you'll find sometimes the Japanese student and international student playing cricket. So that's quite interesting. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Professor. We can end our Q&A session here. Thank yeah, you thank again you. for your wonderful presentation. Thank you. So let me share the agenda uh, slide now. So next we have Kansai University, founded in 1886, one of the Western Japan's four leading private universities. Kansai is one of the most prestigious universities in Japan, with a particularly strong influence in the region. In 2013, the university was ranked eighth among Japanese private universities for schools to which parents wish to send their child, and is consistently ranked in top 10 in other categories as well. So now I invite Ms. Aya from the International Affairs Bureau to provide us more details about the university. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Ms. Aya, you're on mute. Okay. Uh, so let me share my presentation first. So welcome to the Kansai University information session. My name is Aya Zumisha and I'm in charge of general affairs at the International Liaison Office. In today's session, I hope to give you an overview of Kansai University. By the end of this session, you will know more about our school and be interested in studying and living in Japan. We divided this session into three parts. I'll start by talking about the Kansai University overview. Next, you will watch a video introducing Kansai University. At the end of this session, uh, we will have a question and answer session. However, due to the limited time available today, uh, please contact each department directly if you have any questions about uh, undergraduate and graduate admissions or the international student program. Uh, the contact information will be provided during the qu question and answer session. So we hope you will watch until the end of our session. Now I intend to keep my part brief in about 20, uh, 10 minutes. Let's start by looking at the details of Kansai University. Kansai University has 
being ranked the most popular university among high school students in the Kansai area for 13 consecutive years. Thus, the students support the brand power of Kansai University and the fact that it offers a wide variety of faculties. Kansai University is in Osaka. Osaka is the second largest city in Japan. It takes about 60 minutes from Kyoto and Kobe, 90 minutes from Nara, where the famous tourist destinations. We have five campuses located in, in Osaka. The main campus is in Senryama. The others are Takatsuki, Takatsuki News, Umeda, and Sakai campus. Kansai University has 13 undergraduate faculties, 13 graduate schools, and two professional graduate schools. Our academic calendar has two semesters, spring and fall. The beautiful campuses change their appearance with the seasons. You will love walking through the 10,000 cherry blossom trees in springtime, and the autumn leaves are also impressive in our main campus, Senryama. Next, let me introduce our facilities. The General Library is now one of the largest private university libraries in Japan. Kansai University manages four dormitories um, along with one affiliated international dormitory. There are many other facilities. We have an ice skate arena, four gymnasiums, three tennis courts, and four athletic grounds. Let's move on to student support. Number one, grant type scholarships. A total of nearly 3,060 international students receive a grant type non-refundable non -refundable scholarship. Number two, we have two types of support organizations. First, KU Bridge. It mainly plans and operates international exchange events to support international students from the same perspective as students who live a happy study abroad. Second, the International Student Association, which is a community for international students by international students. It expands networks of international students and creates opportunities to support each other. Furthermore, this association holds various events to enable international students to get used to their life in Japan as soon as possible. Number three, the Japanese language support program. The Division of International Affairs provides various Japanese language support programs to ensure that international students enjoy fulfilling student lives. There are five different programs to suit international students' Japanese language level from beginner to advanced. Number four, about employment support, many international students wish to find a job in Japan after graduation or academic completion, and Japanese companies will employ international students who can play an active part globally. However, international students must understand the selection methods and recruitment schedule specific to Japan to carry out job hunting efficiently to find employment in Japan. To that end, Kansai University offers a variety of support. Number five, about the dormitory rooms. Various accommodation environments are prepared, including the unit type where six or seven people share common spaces such as the kitchen and lounge, the shared type with a Japanese student, and a single room type. Also, the resident assistants mainly support the dormitory life and daily life on international students and living on each dormitory. Now, let's take a look at the scholarships. The Division of International Affairs handles scholarships for privately founded international students. There are four types of scholarships. The first one is the scholarship for the international students, uh, which is offered by Kansai University. The second is external scholarship university recommendation granted by organizations external to Kansai University that require university recommendations. The third is external scholarship open requirement granted by organizations external to Kansai University and students apply directly to the scholarship foundation. 
If you want to find more information, please look at the Kansai University's website for the scholarship. I'm moving on to the next slide, Japanese Language and Culture Program Preparatory Course called the Becca Program. This course will provide a variety of classes to develop essential academic skills and thinking skills in Japanese. After completing the Japanese language and culture program, the Becca students who wish to uh, continue their studies at Kansai University are eligible for financial aid, which is reduces the entrance, entrance fee by half. Also, many graduate and undergraduate programs offer entrance examinations for candidates recommended by the BECA program. There is uh, the following list of what the BECA is. So if you want to find more information, please take a look at the website. So well, now I'd like to turn to Kansai University research and projects. At Kansai University, we widely disseminate information and research is to the society, including companies, researchers, students, and the media. These are just some of the research projects at Kansai University. I will share the URL for the Kansai University Research Power Summary site. Uh, this one is only in Japanese, but if you click on each research page from there, you can also select the site's language. So thank you for listening. As I mentioned in initially, if you have any questions about undergraduate or graduate admissions or international student program, uh, Becca, please contact each department directly. Thank you, Ms. Aya, for the, uh, for the presentation. So, All right. And uh, let's move on to the video introducing Kansai University. Is it okay? Yes, 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 sure. Right. Okay, let me do that again, please. Uh, yes, it's okay. Kansai University is one of Japan's leading private universities. I'm sorry to interrupt, Saya. We cannot see the uh, video. Can you please try sharing it? Right. Sorry about this. Uh, no, no, not a problem. So meanwhile, uh, if you if students, if you have any questions, please post them in the current portal. We have a panelist team from Kansai University to answer them.
開いてますかね。関西ユニバーサル。ああ、ですね。関西ユニバーサル。Yes, sorry for interrupting.、Uh, I'm the sub facilitator for today's webinar. I, it's just a suggestion, but、um, you could play the video at the end. Okay. It's not working right now. So I think、um, that also gives you time to check out what the problem is. Okay, I will. Yeah,、um, till then,、um, you can answer a couple of questions in the QA portal. Um, um, shall we start the Q&A session, Ms. Aya? Yes. It's okay. We can, we can share the video later too, so that's not a problem. All right. Whenever the video starts working, you can、um, inform、uh, Ms. Vaishnavi or myself in the chat box. Till、mm. then, you can answer the questions in the Q&A portal. Thank you. So,、um, so let's take up a few questions. Okay.、Uh, so, you have mentioned that Kansai University、uh, provides Japanese language support program, right? So,、mm -hmm. once a student, a master's student, like、uh, at what level will he graduate once he enrolls in this program? Yes. Uh, so, what is the level like、uh, N4, N3? So, as per the JLPT level, at what level、uh, profici at what level is he proficient? For Japanese program? Yes. Oh,、uh, okay. Level up, I must say. Ah, okay. So, J, E, E, J, U, J. JLPT. So we require the level、uh, JLPT is higher than N4.、Uh, I see. Okay. Okay. So for、mm. Japanese programs, higher than、yes. N4. Great. And also, is there、uh, any current, are there any、uh, university scholarships for the batch of 2022? 2022.、Um, Could you say that again?、Uh, are there any scholarships provided by the university for these students?、Mm. Um, okay. Okay. So, we are going to、uh, select、uh, kind of the scholarship for、uh, which scholarship is good for that student s at the entrance exam. Ah, Okay, I see, I see. Thank you. And also, like, do you have any idea about the living expenses for students? Oh, expensive. So, you mean the kind of um, I don't know. Uh, expense reduce or something? What, what do you、um, mean? Uh, like, what are the living expenses? How much does it cost for a student to live in Kansai or in the university dormitory? Ah, university dormitory. For a month, costs about forty thousand yen. Forty thousand, you know, yeah, around that cost. But you you need to more expenses to live. But yeah, so maybe maybe you I mean you have to pay for the. Uh, living expense, so maybe you should. You need 100,000 yen, I think.、Uh, okay, okay,、yeah. but I'm sure、yeah. that because of the plenty of scholarships that are available, students、That's、can、right. easily、uh, 
accommodate themselves. Yes. Okay. And uh, so I think mm -hmm. we can. And also, are there any internships or student exchange programs in Kansai University? Internship exchange program. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we have a uh, um, two English-based program in um, graduate school, and one is Graduate School of Science and Engineering, and the other is Graduate School of Societal Sci Safety Sciences. And yeah, and grad. Graduate School of Science and Engineering has on master's degree program and a PhD. And Graduate School of Societal Safety Sciences has only a PhD degree program. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that. And, and yeah, okay. Oh, uh, yes, yes, please continue. So we time. will try again the video. Yes, yes, video, okay? yes, sure. sure. Okay. Yes. So someone is asking a question of faculty member link. So all the links will be shared in the chat box after the presentation. So you can keep an eye on the chat box. Kansai University is one of Japan's leading private universities. With six campuses located in Osaka, Kansai University boasts more than 130 years of history and has sent over 400,000 graduates into the world. The current student body at Kansai University is approximately 30,000 students spread over 13 faculties, 13 graduate schools, and three professional graduate schools. Around 1,000 international students are studying at Kansai University. This number includes degree-seeking students in the various faculties and graduate schools, and also exchange students from 160 partner universities in 37 countries and regions. Kansai University has five overseas offices to support international student applications and to augment collaborative research around the globe. We have 21 international alumni associations connecting graduates operating on the world stage. Kansai University is redoubling its efforts to recruit international students to our immersion campus, providing a positive environment for people from many different cultures to interact and learn from each other. We offer courses in which Japanese and international students study together with English as the common language. Students and instructors from various backgrounds engage in rewarding exchanges of opinions and philosophies in and out of the classroom. They are exposed to new ways of thinking, nurture confidence to take the initiative in problem solving, and become truly global in their outlook. Yeah. 
Kansai University offers a master's course in the Graduate School of Science and Engineering and doctoral course in the Graduate School of Societal Safety Sciences taught entirely in English. Kansai University established a Japanese language and culture preparatory course called the Bekta program. International students in this course boost their Japanese language ability and the required skills to excel in academic studies at Japanese universities. The communal actions for resident support initiative helps international students making their way in Japan through a mentor system and organizes share houses where up to nine local and international students reside together. The Communal Actions for Employment Support Scheme provides help to international students in improving their business Japanese ability, organizing internships, assisting in job hunting, and providing support after the commencement of employment in local government and companies. We offer many inbound options at Kansai University, such as the exchange program, short and long-term Japanese language and culture programs, and specialized English-mediated summer programs. Whether it is combined education with local students or specially designed courses for international students, Kansai University provides an exceptional learning environment. With its time-honored history and tradition, Kansai University provided the diversity and academic foundation to help you chase your dreams, aim for the future, and embrace your aspirations at our campus. Kansai University welcomes you. So thank you for watching the videos and that's it from us. Uh, thank you, Ms. Aya, for, the, for playing the video and also for answering the questions. Thank you very much. So we can, we are, I think we are, uh, older, I mean, we are on time. So it's okay. We can proceed with the next university. Right. So let me share the agenda slide again. So as per the agenda slide, so next we have Kyoto University of Advanced Sciences. So the, uh, it is a well-reputed university in Japan, so we, it looks it dates back to a history of about 50 years and is an accredited private educational institute in the academic heartland of Japan. So to take the next step and challenge on the global scale, KUAS invited a top-notch CEO of Kyoto-based globally successful firm as chairman, aiming to offer its academic resources in the international arena. So now I invite Mr. Kiyoshi Takeda, the Director of International Office, to give us an overview of the admission process.
Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. Namaste. Mero Namu Takeda Hip. How are you? I'm, um, I'm, my name is Takeda once again, and I work at the Kyoto University of Advanced Science as an international office director. And you know, today I'm so pleased to introduce our all new engineering programs at both at, you know, undergraduate levels and also postgraduate levels. Uh, today's agenda, and I'm going through a Waikato on a photo of the Kyoto University of Advanced Science, KUAS for short, and the KUAS Faculty of Engineering the undergraduate program, and tuition fees and application procedures. And um, no, no, lastly, you know, I will talk about a bit about um, our postgraduate programs and then also contact details for your convenience. So our, just a little briefly, then let me talk about our beautiful city in Kyoto. Our Kyoto, as you see, in the uh, Kyoto was the capital of Japan for thousand years. And there's, because of that, there's so many our beautiful shrines and temples and castles and located in Kyoto. And if you happen to be a big fan of uh, our uh, kind of beautiful anime and uh, comic books and the Kyoto also may be a play, good place for you to visit as a student as Chris are uh, there is any as there is a huge museum that is specifically exhibit a beautiful anime isn't it? and uh, this is our beautiful our uh, beautiful faculty engineering building and if you uh, if you are admitted so you're going to be are uh, you're going to be a student and actually you're studying within the building so just to facilitate a better understanding of who we are and where we are and what we do at uh, KUNS so, uh, uh, let me play a short video clip uh, at first Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Takeda. We cannot hear the audio. Okay, let me play. A new type of university that seeks to incorporate Kyoto's cultural wealth into international, state-of-the-art education. Here is a look at some of the facilities the building features. The workshops are available for free to students 24 hours a day and provide the tools and materials to craft nearly anything imaginable. Elsewhere in the building, challenging research is being carried out every day. There is also a large library, ideal for self-study as well as group discussions. The Faculty of Engineering has great facilities, but that's not all the school has to be proud of. The professors teaching at KUAS hail from all over the world, all lectures are held in English. In addition, all international engineering students are provided with intensive Japanese language courses. The Capstone Project, the first of its kind in Japan, is designed to pit teams of students against realistic challenges presented by over 50 real companies. These unique features will allow KUAS graduates to work immediately anywhere in the world. KUAS represents a new model of university unlike Japan has ever seen. Join us at KUAS and be a street smart global engineer. Let me discuss now KUAS. Uh, KUS started in, in 1969, and it, it's in the Japanese government accredited private university. So any degree that you earn at KUS it can be transferable to any institutions, let's say in the states, in, in the states, in Australia, and also in the UK. 
It, and KU is located in Kyoto Prefecture, and it has 3,600 students. It offers programs at five faculties, including our brand new faculty of engineering that I'm talking about today. And um, engineering school alone, there are as many as 80 international students from 20 countries. And just let me give you another, another example uh, related to this topic. And last year, we had over 300 applicants from 50 countries and at, or for our, our uh, uh, um, bachelor degree programs alone. So you have to have, you'll be uh, encouraged to apply for our engineering programs and our, uh, uh, at, your, uh, at your convenience at your earliest convenience is what I, I mean. Um, today, I'm so proud to share with you this great news that the KUS Engineering Faculty of Engineering has just started you know, hosting a three Indian undergraduates and uh, well, out of, uh, two female students are actually enrolled as well. And also a master's degree level, master's degree candidates. And we are, are, are also just started hosting a full Indian um, uh, master degree candidates and on our campus. And, um, one and out of four students, and there is well, one of female students. And so female students and are, who are now thinking about and whether to apply for KUS engineering program, uh, yes, you will be uh, you're highly are, are encouraged to apply for KUS because we already have a, uh, Indian female students in the, at the both undergraduate levels and also postgraduate levels. And there are four, uh, several features of the Faculty of Engineering in the KUS. Number one, our program is entirely conducted in English language, you know, both uh, undergraduate levels and also postgraduate levels. So you don't have to worry about your own the Japanese language levels when you apply for KUS. Uh, you don't have to have a, a prior knowledge of Japanese language at all. So when you apply for KUS, number two, we at the um, at the undergraduate level, we still offer you an, an opportunity to learn the Japanese language, how to speak, how to write, how to listen, or so that you can have a great opportunities to or explore when you when it comes to a job hunting with the Japanese companies, or which is a still predominant, pre predominantly Japanese speaking environment. So number our, okay, what you learn is on our program is the uh, mechanical and electrical system means the computing uh, engineering programs. Uh, uh, to make it uh, simply put, our program is a, com a great combination of mechanical, electrical and computing engineering programs. So as you see on the slides, you can learn about all these 13 engineering majors just in just one place at KUS and mechanical electrical system engineering. In other words, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, tailor all of, your, all of your coursework in order to address your future career needs as an engineers. You might want to, for example, you might want to become our uh, engineer uh, engineers who want to develop more sophisticated or uh, electric cars, as obviously a um, uh, majority of people have been switching to uh, uh, driving electric cars instead of gasoline car currently. Um, so in, in that case, you might want to take more, more of a coursework to, uh, to develop your expertise in the fields of our uh, electrical devices, maybe your also material sciences, because material sciences are very important for developing you know, electric cars in the futures. So uh, in other words, you can have a lot of flexibilities or what to learn, how to learn in, in, on our program. And to, uh, conceptually speaking, our uh, KUS multidisciplinary engineering program is going to put computing and the data processing at the center of our program and uh, uh, moving to the right, left. And uh, you also have an exposure to uh, mechanical engineering. And uh, to the right, you also have the exposure to electrical engineering at the same time. I'm not talking about just one of them. I'm all, I'm talking about all of them that you are, are have you're gonna have uh, exposures to, uh, which is a, 
uh, very advanced, very progressive, very innovative engineering program concept. Actually, that's the only uh, KUS, the only school, the only one of the schools that successfully adopted this innovative engineering program in Japan. And um, and uh, the culmination of our program is the capstone project. And uh, you, if you remember you know, from the video that you just saw uh, a minute ago, the uh, culmination of a capstone project. Um, capstone project is a project where you are actually or work closely with the professional engineers who now works as a professional engineer in the industry in Japan already. Um, by doing that, uh, you be are expected to work. Uh, uh, develop uh, practical skills and knowledge that you can use. And even from the day one, you join a Japanese company as an engineer. Uh, this is how KUS engineering programs created and, and also are intended to how KUS engineering school uh, intended to develop the next generation of street smart engineers who is capable of uh, practical knowledge and skills that they can use. And, to make an impact on the whole society as an engineer. And tuition costs are in one year of $14,000 on average, um, $14,000 US dollars you know, per year, uh, which is the, makes the KUS engineering schools the, one of the most affordable engineering schools in the world. And as you see at the bottom, the cost of living in Kyoto is around $1,000 per month, including uh, dormitory fee and uh, two meals, or also our food and books, and also travel expenses and, uh, if, you, if necessary. And as I said, in the, uh, as you see, it is in an old year, so the KUS engineering school is the, one of the most affordable uh, engineering schools in, throughout the world. So you don't have to worry about in the scholarships because the KUS, uh, it's called KUS engineering schools is the uh, tuition cost is already lowest levels by the world standards, world standards and institution standards, as you see here. Application timelines and the, uh, for undergraduate students and the, um, um, early, our, our early entry actually has already started and since October 1st of 2021, it's gonna end in you know, October 31st. And our, but the, don't worry, uh, we also have uh, uh, our regular entry that will start on December 1st of 2021 and then also end on January 14th. And, uh, even if you are not ready to or apply for our regular entry, oh, don't worry. We still have, we want to still have our final entry that will start on February 15th and 2022. These are, these are all entries that goes, goes for uh, September 2022 program intake. So what kind of documents are you are supposed to be required to submit KUS? Number one, um, number one ID photo, application essay, transcripts, and four certificates of graduation or expected graduation. Uh, means that even if you are currently are in the 12th grade, 12th three years, you can still apply for KUS even before you take in the CBS, CBSC next year. Um, uh, just relating to this, number five, you see, uh, we have, uh, we can accept your predicted CBSE, CBSE scores now so that you can, or uh, again, you can apply for KUS even now, or uh, even now, even when you don't have your official CBSE scores. As long as you can send us, it'll be uh, acceptable. As long as you can send your are uh, your final CBSC scores next year before you enroll at KUS. Um, also, if you happen to be, uh, let's say, in an international baccalaureate program, you can also still or um, still use your I, you know, IB uh, predicted scores in, in order to apply for KUS now. Um, number six, ev your evidence of English proficiency. If you're not taught and regularly in your schools in, in English, 
and then you need to submit you know, one letter of recommendation from uh, from one of your teachers and school guidance uh, counselors and who knows you well and write about you well. Minimum requirements, you know, given the nature of uh, any engineering programs, you know, we also have uh, we also require students to have a comprehensive understanding of physics and the math equivalent to a high school level, upper secondary school levels. Um, preferably, um, you, need, you will be expected to have a cupboard before you enroll at KUS algebra, geometry, pre-calculus, statistics, force and motion, waves and electricity, and the magnetism atom structures. Um, but when you apply for KUS, you'll be expected to uh, uh, completed, uh, I mean, when you enroll, before you enroll at KUS, you'll be expected to have completed a 12 year standardized educational curriculum in, in India. Um, so you may be wondering, you, uh, you may be wondering about your um, English proficiency test scores. Um, KUS is set you know, 75 for to, you know, 75 or better for to, uh, TOEFL IBT, you know, 5.5 for or better for IELTS, and you know, 105 uh, or better for Duolingo. Uh, let me talk a bit about uh, postgraduate pro, uh, program focuses. Um, as you see on the right, as you see on the right hand side on the, this or, uh, slide in the uh, pro, uh, core areas in the uh, you know, mechanical, electrical, electronic, electrical, chemical, and computer science. Um, you see uh, our faculty's research areas on the, on the right, you know, DNA nanotechnology, starting from nanotechnology, power electronics, and renewable energy, and multiple robot systems, and, if you or think that your or speciality or your expertise is around the uh, some of these areas, then you'll be recommended. You'll be highly recommended to apply for KUS because there is going to be a great match uh, between your expertise areas and research areas. Oh, sorry, prof professors and research areas. So to apply, so uh, our, not only KUS. Yes, but in general, other engineering schools in Japan, and there is a unique system called a pre-application reviewing process. And even before you invite it officially to apply to uh, uh, engineering schools, um, which is again is true of uh, KUS engineering school as well. Uh, so even before you are officially invited to apply to KUS engineering school, you need, you need to go through uh, what we call the pre-application reviewing process conducted by our professors to see if they can supervise your or thesis at postgraduate levels. So currently, our, we have just started on October 18th and our, from 18th 18 and then for this um, uh, pre-application reviewing. And if you are interested in uh, KUS, are interested in applying for KUS at postgraduate levels, and you, I would be highly recommended to go to our website to see um, details about uh, application procedures for our postgraduate programs. It, well, if you are not ready, you know, or for uh, apply, uh, applying for KUS engineering program now. Then the next round we're going to start January 1st of 2022 for your assurance. So uh, in, in any way, you know, be um, either way, you'll be recommended to take a look at our website to, to understand the whole application procedures and at uh, postgraduate levels. Just so before wrapping up my presentation. Um, let me just apply, let me apply just another video so that you, uh, one female fe featuring a female student from Sudanka. Hi, I'm Tirele, a first year undergraduate student at Kyoto University of Advanced Science. After finishing high school, I was interested in pursuing electronics and electrical, software, as well as mechanical engineering. 
I chose KUAS because it gives me the unique opportunity to follow an integrated engineering program with subjects from many different fields of engineering. I was also drawn by the capstone project that allows us to apply our knowledge to real world problems by working at Japanese companies even before graduating to make us truly street smart global engineers. I am also thoroughly enjoying the cultural diversity among students from all over the world. I'd like to encourage you to apply to KUAS to experience state-of-the-art engineering while living in the beautiful city of Kyoto. Lastly, uh, let me introduce our, our KUS Indian official representative for your free consultation and free advice, uh, Megumi Po, Managing Director of the educational, uh, ed educational Agency located uh, headquartered in India and both in Tokyo in, in India. Uh, she's managing, she, uh, Megumi Po, uh, sounds in, Megumi Paul, Ms. Megumi Paul, actually born and raised in India, migrated to Japan in the 1990s. And then she, uh, since then, she has been involved in the uh, um, disseminating information about uh, all Japanese universities back to our Indian uh, societies in, in, in India. So she, she's now helping the Indian students uh, migrate and uh, apply for uh, Japanese universities, and including KUS. So if you are uh, interested, you can, um, uh, you can contact her uh, for more information about KUS Faculty of Engineering, Engineering Schools, and uh, program details, and how to process um, application procedures. And um, it should, you should be able to feel more familiar, feel more familiar with the uh, procedures and also uh, engineering in the school in, in details. So contact details in the Megumi poll at focaled.com and WhatsApp in the 80 or 81 80 um, I'll pause here. You can take a screenshot for your convenience. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and thank you very much for your attention and then I'll let the floor open to your question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Takeda, for such a comprehensive presentation. I'm sure students are highly motivated to join the university. Let's proceed with the Q&A session. Uh, we can quickly take two to three questions. So there's a student who knows that there is an early entry application portal and his query mm -hmm. is, like for the different disciplines, do they have to apply for different, uh, I mean, uh, uh, do they have to apply, uh, for example, a student wants to apply for both mechanical and electrical systems engineering. Do they have to give separate applications or in one application can they give their preference? Okay. Um, no, uh, actually uh, there's only one, uh, one, whole, one straight line and application procedure process. So you, uh, once you are, so you don't have to work, you don't have to have a variety, you don't have to have the variety of application uh, documents uh, to apply for KUS. It's been on the streamline so well. You go online and then just to see on the details and the application procedure, application documents and details, and then you'll be uh, assured to send us documents in, in one straight line. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you, Mr. Takeda. And there's another question about the application fee waiver. Application fee waiver, sir. Um, I I wish uh, I wish we could have, but you know, we can, we don't have, and we don't have the you know, of our fee waiver um, uh, or uh, concepts in our application procedure. Okay, thank you. And also, uh, he has this student has prepared documents a few months ago. So can I? You sorry? Can he use the same documents, or he has to get a new date? documents with uh, which are revised. Oh, great. So uh, it all depends on the uh, application document that he or she is talking about. Um, I'm talking 
talking about. And there might be some document that you need to update in order to, have, to make it in our current application application window. So um, I hope um, you can have uh, take a look at the um, our application complete application or guideline once again to make sure that the, you are on the right track for that matter. Okay, thank you, Mr. Takeda. And let, this is the last question. So you have mentioned about the capstone project, right? So is that only for the undergrad students, or it's available for graduate students too? That's uh, that's a great uh, that's a great question. And actually, are uh, that's in, uh, mainly intended to for undergraduate students, are uh, because the uh, because the uh, program uh, the uh, the um, as you see, you know, our whole concept is you know, how to prepare um, you know, students for job hunting I and mean, job opportunities available with the Japanese companies. So um, Capstone is a part of the programs that makes students available, ready for take the jobs in Japan as an engineers. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Takeda, again. So we can end the university presentation here. So uh, let's proceed. Let me share the agenda screen. So well, now we have the presentation by Japan Science and Technology Agency. There are many students who are looking for student exchange programs and internship opportunities in Japan. JST and Mr. Nishikawa is your go-to person for all such students. I invite Mr. Nishikawa, the advisor for international relations and cooperation, to give us more details about this. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Nishikawa from Japan Science and Technology Agency. I'm today I'm going to talk about a program called Sakura Science Program, which is an invitation program. So let me uh, share my slide. <clears throat> okay, I'll start with this slide. <clears throat> Uh, JST, Japan Science and, Science and Technology Agency, is uh, under the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, and Science and Technology. <clears throat> and we comes right under the uh, ministry. And we, 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 our main activity is to uh, promote science and technology uh, and also hum, human resource development in the, uh, in the field of science and technology. And uh, actually, uh, this is our New Delhi office, India office. Uh, in, in the year 2015, I myself set up this office in New Delhi together with the University of Tokyo. So we share this office uh, uh, in New Delhi. <coughs> this office uh, is located just to the north of this Deer Park. I'm sure you know Deer Park, a southern uh, part of uh, New Delhi. <coughs> and it is, uh, which is very close to IIT Delhi and also Department of Science and Technology and also JNU. Uh, so it is uh, located very conveniently uh, located uh, in this area. <laughs> and then we do uh, some uh, many uh, joint research programs with India. Uh, let me show some examples. Uh, these uh, are the three projects uh, together with uh, DST, Department of Science and Technology India. Uh, all of these three projects related to ICT, uh, Information Communication Technology. The combination of research universities are here on the right hand side. Uh, first one, University of Tokyo and IIT Bombay. And second one, University of Tokyo and IIT Hyderabad. And then third one, Kyushu University and IIT Delhi. Uh, these are the programs uh, we do it together with DST. <coughs> and then uh, this uh, program uh, we call SATREPS. Uh, this program is uh, handled by Japan side only. Japan JST together with JICA, uh, <coughs> Japan International uh, Cooperation Agency. And then the program is uh, handled by Nagoya Electric Works plus Nihon University. And our counterpart in India is IIT Hyderabad. <coughs> and we have been doing this for the last uh, uh, nearly four or five years now. And we have some other programs uh, with India. So, and then uh, this Sakura Science program was uh, just started uh, in the year 2015, right after I was uh, uh, sent to India. <clears throat> so this program is a short-term introductory invitation program to Japan. 
short time means one week to maximum three weeks. So uh, we invite people from uh, various countries and, and introduce them to Japanese science, top notch science and technology plus and then uh, culture, Japanese culture and then exchange with people in Japan. And in the, up until uh, 2019, we invited uh, people from 14, uh, 41 countries, including, of course, India. But starting uh, this year, April uh, 2021, just expanded this uh, eligible uh, countries to all countries in the world. <coughs> uh, and also, uh, in the past, this program covers uh, you know, only the people in the field of science engineering, you know, natural science and engineering and medical science and so on. But now starting this year, April this year, we expanded this field. And then this, is, this program will also cover the people in the field of humanities and social science. <laughs> so uh, I think virtually uh, many, many people can uh, come to Japan by this program. And then, uh, about 85% of uh, this program is covered by this type one, open application program, this type of program. So in this case, uh, they should be receiving or host organizations in Japan. So who are the host organizations in Japan? High schools, universities, research institutes, private companies, NGO, NPOs, and other registered organizations. A governmental organization or non-governmental governmental organization or also or any officially registered organization are eligible to to be become the host organizations in japan <laughs> and so th this is the process for application so uh the, the applicant of this program uh, is host organizations in japan so only the host organizations in japan can uh, submit a proposal they submit proposals to jst and then after evaluation, if it is awarded, we provide almost 100% of the expenses for the invitation to uh, Japanese uh, host agency. So uh, the invitees from other countries, uh, they can visit Japan almost free of charge uh, because uh, this program covers air affairs, round trip air affairs, and then uh, accommodations, uh, food, and also uh, local transportation in Japan and even the covers the overseas uh, insurance is covered by this program <clears throat> but there are certain uh, uh, regulations or limitations uh, it's basically uh, the BBTs uh, should be under uh, 40 40 years and below and they should be uh, uh, in the high schools uh, uh, younger youngest people in the high school means in India for example uh, uh, equivalent to uh, class 10, 11, and 12 uh, is equivalent to Japanese high school. <laughs> of course, you have to be selected by, by the sending agency or send, sending organization. <laughs> uh, this is an example of the program, uh, implement, actually implemented program in the past. In case of the University of Tokyo, they invited 10 computer science students uh, from IIT Delhi, IIT Hyderabad, Kampul, uh, and Madras. <laughs> uh, these they invited for nearly three years, uh, three weeks, and they carried out some uh, joint research programs and so on. Uh, this is one example. <clears throat> and then uh, there are many universities who apply, uh, who become the uh, uh, actually uh, awarded in this program. For example, uh, as, as far as the number of MITs is concerned, Miyazaki University is the number one. They, already invited over 700. And also number two, Okayama University, then Osaka University, Tokyo Metropolitan University. Of course, uh, University of Tokyo also uh, over 500 uh, people they invited. So uh, almost many, uh, I should say, almost all the top universities in Japan have already uh, applied and awarded and invited the people from uh, those uh, 41 countries so far. <laughs> And uh, this is the total number. <clears throat> uh, in the past, uh, uh, this started, this program started in 2014, starting with uh, nearly 3,000 people. And then uh, up to 2019, six years, uh, 33,000, over 33,000 people have been already invited to Japan. And specifically from India, 
around 2,900 people from India alone uh, invited, uh, been invited to, to Japan by this Sakura Science Program. <laughs> <clears throat> and then uh, whoever comes to Japan by this program automatically becomes a member of Sakura Science Club. This is the Alumni Association uh, of Sakura Science Program. So, uh, and then uh, for example, uh, uh, this is an example of a student. This is from India. She, she was now uh, admitted to University of Kobe. She came to Japan uh, in, I think, uh, uh, yeah, in 2020. <clears throat> uh, and then she applied to uh, Japan, uh, to University of Tokyo and uh, she got uh, admitted to, to Tokyo University. She's now studying online from India. And also the, another student uh, in the same group, uh, Mr. Kumar, he was uh, now uh, admitted to Hokkaido University. So I, I'm sure he's also studying on, online. And then uh, we had the first alumni meeting in India in the year 2018, October. Also, I went there and then uh, this is the official residence of a Japanese ambassador, uh, Mr. Hiramatsu. Uh, he is, if uh, he made a speech at the time. And then so for this meeting, uh, the main guest from India is Professor Vijay Laghavan. He's, he's a prophet, I'm sure you know principal scientific officer to the government of India. He is a great supporter uh, to, uh, uh, to this program. And then at that time, we selected the coordinators for the India Sakura Science Club Alumni Association. And then uh, he is one, uh, Dr. Jitenda Chu. He was the assistant professor of ISA Pune. He is acting as a main coordinator, uh, so, so to say, uh, president of the uh, India Alumni Association. And then that time, uh, three more uh, supporting coordinators were selected. But the, the coordinators number increased and currently we have about 10 uh, coordinators in total. A second alumni meeting was held in February 2020, just before this uh, pandemic started. Uh, so this was held uh, in IIT Delhi campus. Uh, and then also a new ambassador, uh, His Excellency Mr. Suzuki, also attended. And we had a, a, a great meeting at that time. <clears throat> and then this year also we had a meeting, alumni meeting. But uh, this year we can have it, I can have it on, only on online. Uh, this is May 29th. We had it online. And uh, we had a great uh, science, uh, scientist from India uh, as, as our main guest two uh, uh, scientists from India were invited as a, a main guest of this uh, meeting online. And then, uh, yeah, uh, the center, top uh, center, he is a Dr. Jitenda Chu, uh, uh, and on, to his right is ambassador, and to his left, uh, this is myself. And then at the bottom here, Mr. Miyauchi, he's a University of Tokyo, direct, India Office Director. He's also, he also participated in this program. And then uh, not only in India, we started uh, forming alumni association in some other ma major countries. And this is uh, Sri Lanka also we formed this alumni and, uh, and the first meeting was in 2019. And, we, and this is Japan also we had. Uh, we had Japan uh, alumni association uh, and this is an online meeting held this year <laughs> because uh, many, uh, not many, but uh, there are some uh, students who visited Japan by Sakura Science Program, and then again visited Japan as a st students or researchers, and so they formed uh, alumni in Japan. So that time, main speaker, keynote speaker was the Dr. Mamoru uh, uh, Pori, uh, 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 Mori, Mori, Dr. Mori Mamoru is the first official uh, astronaut. Uh, from Japan. <laughs> He's the first uh, Japanese astronaut. And then, now <clears throat> uh, yeah, I just skipped this one. So uh, this program is not the individual to individual program. This is, uh, as I should say, organization to organization or institution to institution program. So there should be sending organizations in your country and then uh, receiving organizations in Japan. So if you are a student of, of schools, high schools in, in your country, 
you have to, you, your school is going to become the sending organization. And if you are a university student, then your university will be the sending organization. So uh, your university or your school must have or find a host organization in Japan. This is key, it's essential, because only the host organizations in Japan can make application to, uh, to us uh, for this program. So uh, if you're you have to, if you're a student, you request your principal or your teacher or your professor to find the right uh, partner in Japan and request them, persuade them or request them to receive your, your students or you, yourself by this program. So this process is uh, going to be most important for you. I'm sure most of the, the, the audience today is a student. So you have to speak to your teacher or your professor or your principal, and then uh, explain about this program. Uh, this information, uh, all this information is available in English on our website. So just uh, Google Sakura Science Program, then you find everything. And if you uh, also, uh, you can send the email to me or to our JST organization. So I hope uh, you you come to Japan soon and I, uh, to buy this program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Nishikawa, for the wonderful presentation. We can look into a few Q and uh, we can look into a few questions. So, uh, when students come under this program, so does it cover all the expenses like living, transportation, everything? Yes, it's almost everything. So. Uh, of course, uh, you have to come to nearly uh, Mumbai. You, know, you have to, there's a flight up to up to there. Uh, uh, overseas uh, travel uh, expenses, airfares, okay. round trip airfares, and also all the transport in Japan, all the uh, accommodation uh, and also food in Japan is covered. And as I told you, all the uh, even the, the insurance, travel insurance is covered by this program. So uh, you don't have to. Uh, spend all, almost nothing, you know. Yeah, that's great, Mr. Nishikawa. Mm. And also, is there any stipend given along with it, or it is the? Uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> that is not uh, you know, not provided by this program. So you have to bring, uh, you know, if you want to buy a souvenir, of course, you have to bring some money. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> that's, that's right, and. Uh, also, like, is, is this opportunity only for IITNs or is it open for everyone from o students? Open from for any schools in India or uh, in, in your country or any university in your country or, or any research institute, you know, even the private company can apply for this program. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also this, uh, are there any scholarships that are being provided if there is a master's student? Uh, 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 this program is only uh, the initial invitation purpose. So after you visit Japan by this program, and then if you find Japan interesting, then you apply to each university of your choice, and then they will provide, uh, show you some of the possibility for, for the scholarship and so on. Yes, yes. I'm sure this would definitely add some weight to the application uh, for the, uh, I mean, for higher education. Yes. So, and also in your slides, you have mentioned that there is this research collaboration with many universities that is mm. going on, like IIT, University of Tokyo, IIT Bombay, and so on. Yes. So phase one is still, it, it's mentioned that it's still 2021. So is it going to continue in future too? Yes, uh, we have been doing this for many years. And then uh, not only uh, this, many other uh, university or research institute in India also participated in this program. Uh, so, and also this program uh, or some other programs also will continue, you know, with India. And for example, if you come to Japan and uh, you become the, uh, a researcher in, Jap in, in a Japanese university, then you can also apply for this program, you know, from Japan. Yes. Oh, okay, from Japan too. Wow, yes. that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nishikawa yes. again. So we can end our session here. Thank you. And yes. so, yes, this brings us to the end of the webinar. I thank you everyone for your continuous attention. I hope today's webinar gave you an overview of the application process in various universities. 
and we wish you all the success in your efforts in pursuing higher studies in japan so for more information about um, universities and the upcoming webinars please scan this qr code and yes that's all for today's webinar thank you again for attending